Hey you guys, I wanted to show you how I make brushes in RH6 using the custom brush designer. Now today's brushes are going to be made only using stuff that's in ArtRage already. So anyone watching this video should be able to make these brushes exactly as well as I've made them or better. So let's get started. Um, what I did first was I just made a canvas. Let me show you. If I go to uh, resize the canvas, you can see that the canvas is a thousand by a thousand pixels, just 72 pixels per inch. And that's just kind of a nice easy little square that's going to be easy to import into the brush palette when, I, when I'm setting up my stamps. I'll tell you what stamp means in a second, but just check this out. Before I started today's video, I made a couple different brush surfaces that I think could be kind of fun to play with. So here's five different brushes. Let's look at this one. I usually go to view, canvas setting, and because I'm an oil painter by, at heart, an oil painter by training, I like to set my, my canvas up to have this essential canvas. That's this kind of bumpy, looks like real canvas feel, right? Um, and I like to make my brushes with that canvas because what it does is it gives there a little bit of chunky texture to the brush stamp. And what we're making here is a stamp. So this is going to act like the digital brush head that gets spread across the, the virtual surface making the pigment spread using this particular texture to do that spread of the pigment. So I like that to have some texture to it. So that's why I set up my canvas to be an essential canvas. Now let's see what that looks like in practice. So I'm going to make a new layer. So I have a different layer for every single one of these brushes. Now it doesn't really matter what brush you use or what tool you use to make this brush. Um, you just want to kind of get in the end to an interesting outcome, right? An outcome that say, wow, that kind of looks like a real brush. Um, and so I know that if I use the oil brush, it has a pretty realistic bristle effect and I can pull in both directions from that center of, of my stroke and I can get a really nice looking realistic mark, right? So this is pretty basic, but, but pretty nice. And I'm gonna in interrupt the middle of that with a palette knife stroke just to kind of make it a little more interesting. Then I'm gonna get my gloop pen and let's see, sample this darker color and just add even more of that kind of rough texture around the edges, like that. And I think that might be all I need to do. Um, I'm gonna create a little more chaos here with the palette knife. I like using this one that's kind of like a frost distortion palette knife and it, it'll just give me some kind of crazy edges there, which is what I want. I wanna have some variety, explore stuff, right? So um, I like that and let's go ahead and move on. But before we do, what I need to do, this is pretty important, because do you see how any, let me get a smaller tool so you can see. Areas over here, you can see some of the three dimensionality of the brush stroke, and even this grain of the, of the canvas, all of those things are gonna be interpreted by the software as part of the brush head. So when I say all of those values that are not pure white are gonna be interpreted as part of the brush head, what that'll look like is, this part of the brush will be nice and dark, but these areas will be kind of a very soft gray. So you won't really get a crisp mark here. Your mark will kind of have a fog of value around it. Even though it's gonna be really light, it's gonna kind of mess things up. So what we wanna do is go back to um, view and we go to canvas settings, which we already have opened up here. So let me close it, show you, you go view, canvas settings, and then you can change that back to maybe the Let's go back to just basic paper. And it takes away all of that kind of crazy, cool texture that was going on. I can even just take the lighting off, which watch this. So I can go back to canvas, essential canvas, and I can just turn canvas lighting off. And what that does is that helps you see what the mark would look like without all of that interpretive stuff going on around it. It, it also gives me a good clue that I need to mask this out. It's interesting to see that that essential canvas doesn't really use a 
pure white background. What it uses is this kind of creamy tan, um, ungessoed canvas texture. So now there's that, right? Now, so I've cleaned that up. I just use the oil paint. And here's what's super cool. Like if you turn the, the lighting back on, you can see all that three-dimensional brush stroking, but turning canvas lighting off kind of gets you back to a place where the software looks a lot like almost every other digital painting software. So here's kind of the magic of Art Rage is seeing that three-dimensional canvas. You can just pop that on and off. Pretty cool. So that layer looks good. That layer looks pretty good. I just want to keep, um, I want to make sure to keep any of the brush stroke away from the edge because I want my stamp not to have any super artificial edges to it. I want it to kind of look like a real brush stroke. So by that, I just don't want any of my brush stroke to touch the edge of my canvas. Then, so that's that one's fine. That one's pretty good. Let's get back up to that layer. I'm just kind of cleaning up anything that's like, like I said, that fog of not pure white. I need it to be kind of pure white or it's going to be part of my brush stroke. So clean that one up. That one's fine. Let's get back on the right layer here. Just clean that tiny bit up up there. Yeah, that one's fine. And then this one, this one's great. So, all right, I think we're good to go. Um, let's go ahead and see how this works. See if our theory is a good one. Um, I'm gonna export this as a PNG and I'm just gonna call it brush test one, save. Call this one brush test two, save. And I like to do a bunch of these at one time because it saves time. Um, you get a better idea of what works and what doesn't. I definitely, because I don't have a lot of free time in my life, have to kind of work a little more haphazardly sometimes. But um, but I also wanted to, you know, I could have sat down and made just a perfectly easy, wonderful little demo here without any surprise. But what fun would that be? I want to make sure that you guys are seeing this happen just in the same way it would be for you as you're just kind of saying, Hey, let's see what works. Let's try some stuff and, um, go from there. Well, I, I kind of like the ones I have. We'll come back if we need any more, but so I'm going to leave this. I'm just going to save it. And I save this project file as my brush test file. It's an art rage file. So I can always come back to it, add to it, change it, whatever. And now I'm going to go file new. And I'm just going to use the window size, basically my, my screen size canvas. Now, here we go. Um, if I go to the custom brush here and I turn the settings on, you kind of have opacity, loading, grain, etc. But if we go to brush designer, what I can do is load the brush head from the desktop and I'm going to go pick one of these guys. Let's try that newest one we made. And then if I demo that brush here, it's not really doing much. That's because I have white paint selected, right? So I change it back and it looks nothing really like that. So what I need to do is invert that brush head. And now it starts to look a little bit more like the brush that I created. Interesting, pretty cool brush. It looks a little bit like if you leave your you know an oil brush and you didn't clean it properly and now you got kind of almost like it's like a half brush half shovel that's what it looks like so let's see what some of our other ones did oops i'm going to load brush again let's grab brush test number two and actually maybe yeah let's try that interesting okay so this one let's clear here very very different so not bad um let's try one more let's try number five invert clear yeah so not bad so that's kind of how to make a brush head the grain um 
you can select from the collection you can um, you can really put anything in as the grain um, like you can use canvas you can even use brush heads as the grain and it changes things quite a bit notice how the grain has had a really dramatic effect on the brush head so kind of fun stuff I'm just gonna say okay for now just so we can try one of these out Wow that's interesting I don't really know what that resembles in realist you know in traditional painting but it is a pretty interesting brush um, I want to kind of go back and just go to one of my normal canvas textures now this grain is literally just a download from one of those uh, free to use texture sites um, and look how different the brush is now the grain is really different um, and even if I invert it it's really interesting all right let's change the brush head one more time and go back to the desktop and this time I want to try this newest brush we just made again and I want to see oh so this time I didn't change I didn't invert it back so if I invert it so it looks like it should now it works like a real brush I really like that brush I think that looks pretty cool it has some interesting things going on with it um, if we go all the way over here you can see that the color variation is one and the luminance variation is four and that's why I, mean, I don't know if you'll be able to see this but that's why there are these kind of rainbowing effects in there um, then there's a bunch of settings in here which are all pretty self-explanatory and then a bunch of settings in here that are also pretty self-explanatory But I really like it. I think that that was a good experiment. And let's just try this one more time. We go back to load our brush heads. Here's some more of the brushes that we created. Hmm. That one's pretty good. Let's try that one. Oops, forgot to invert it again. Remember the black part's gonna be the mark making part, so you gotta make sure to invert it. Yeah, good brush. Looks like a real brush. It really behaves like a real brush. Look at that wonderful brush. And that is a tool made with the default tools in ArtRage, and it performs as well, if not better, than a lot of the built-in ones. So let's look at this in detail. If I go into the settings, Dab spacing. This is how far apart each stamp from the brush is going to be, right? So if I separate it out, get kind of a staccato mark. If I put it at zero, then there's one continuous stroke, just like you would get with a normal brush. Um, jitter is, is going to vary the spacing, so there's a little randomness there. The follow stroke just means it's going to follow it. Rotation jitter is interesting. If I have rotation turned on, it, it the brush stamp spins like a bicycle wheel. If I have it set to zero, then it just is like a normal stroke and the, there's no rotation. It just follows the mark, the, the kind of direction of the mark. Grain size is like how large or small this grain is and how it influences the, the brush head. And then you have taper and opacity. Opacity just means how, how opaque it is. You know, if you have it down to zero, it's gonna be transparent, and then you know, here's opaque, and there's everything in the middle. Um, you can play with how pressure affects things, or how much loading the brush has, or the grain amount. So we can jam the you know bunch more grain into it, and it's gonna look kind of speckled. So I kind of like leaving it down here. Um, I almost always keep smoothing off because I don't like how it disrupts the stroke. So if I see the mark I make, and then the mark that is left are very different. Smoothing is great if you need to do something very designy and everything has to be very, very, very um, kind of perfect uh, and, and like there's no wobbles in your stroke make or any stroke mar or mark making. But 
I don't really prefer that. So I usually keep that at zero. And then you can play with the rest of that if you want to. Um, color pickup means that if you have, let's say, um, oops, didn't I grab the right color? Let's say you have this bright blue, and I have my color pickup set to 100, and then I choose like red or something, then it's gonna make it purple, right? Just by the interaction of these two paints, they're just gonna kind of naturally blend with each other. That's color pickup. Um, it effectively is like wet on wet painting. Color pickup set down here is very different because what's gonna happen is the paint's gonna interact, but not to the same degree, right? So here's me pushing hard. You can still see some interaction, even with the color pickup set to 3%, but it's just not quite the same. So, um, color refresh, color pickup, luminance is gonna vary the brightness, but color variation is gonna give you a little variety in the color that you selected. So, those are both good. I like to give them a little bounce there. So let's say okay, and let's play with our new brush. And let's play with it on a different canvas just so we can see it a little bit more clear. So let's change this to sort of your default paper and just let the brushwork really stand out. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I really like that brush. So that's a brush made from scratch in ArtRage using just the basic tools in ArtRage to create it. It has a really nice mark, a really realistic mark. It looks a lot like a filbert. Um, you know, those of you guys that are oil painters or, or acrylic painters or watercolorists, you guys know what a filbert is. It's that brush that kind of has the end of the brush looks a little bit like your thumb would look or your thumbnail would look. It has a kind of a taper on the edges. Um, depending on pressure, it can be more of a flap or a filbert. So it's kind of this brush is sort of in between there. But either way, I really like it. I can see myself doing a painting with this. And that's sort of a, a quick and dirty breakdown of how to do brush making in Art Rage. And I think, you know, I think we've got some good stuff. This brush designer is getting more and more functional. The performance is getting better and better. Um, and you can see that this paint quality is unrivaled by any of the other softwares out there right now on mobile or on desktop. This is the most naturalistic painting you can get on a desk, you know, on a computer. Um, it feels like real paint, guys. Give it a shot. Um, check out the comments. Check out the subscribe. Check out Patreon. Check out all that stuff. Um, if you want me to make a brush pack and you're just like, hey, that's cool. Thanks for showing me, but I don't want to build my own brushes. If you want me to release some brushes, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. If you um, want more detailed and granular tips on this, let me know. If you want to see me do a whole painting with this brush and, or a set of brushes I just made and just kind of see um, you know, how that goes, let me know too. Um, thanks again and, and best wishes guys. Take care.